Hey, Mid Rivers Christian Church family. Uh, we are really excited that you are joining us here again this morning. Thank you so much for, for being a part of this Sunday morning service. And uh, just had a quick couple of announcements for you before we get started. Uh, first of all, um, just to kind of restrict some exposure to the coronavirus, we're actually going to be reducing our office hours. So what that's going to look like maybe for you, if you do have any questions or, or uh, you need to coordinate something with the office, um, you can reach us at info at at midriverscc.org, or you can call us at 636-278-3000 uh, if you do need to coordinate any, any pieces of information uh, with us. So we'll, we'll be working remotely for the most part, but um, just let us know and we'll, we'll get the right people to you. Uh, the second thing is you might notice in our comments section, there's going to be a link uh, to our website that's going to take you to a study guide uh, for for the sermon notes today. And so um, what Pastor Bob has put together is just uh, just some questions to go along with the sermon, uh, as well as the, ver the key verses. And we would love for you, even as an individual or a family, uh, to, to just go through those and go through those notes and really just encourage one another um, as a body of believers. And if you, if you don't maybe want to do it individually, maybe just call up your best friend and say, hey, let's go through this together and just kind of walk through the Word. I, I really highly encourage you. And if you wouldn't mind just giving us a few uh, people pieces of feedback as well, just to see how that has blessed you, um, just let us know, and we would, love, we would love to hear about that. And the last thing is um, that I can't actually be here for, so if you wouldn't mind just running with me upstairs real quick, outside, uh, I'll meet you there, okay? All right, we've made it. Come on out with me. Whew, all that running, finally. Hey, so we've announced this for the past couple of weeks, but um, our, our elder Ben, he uh, goes and, and helps restock the, the Hope Food Pantry right down the road here um, for, for our community. And we wanna let you know that um, we are super thankful that you've been donating thus far. Uh, and we look forward to continuing to support the needs of our community as well as the needs of the church body. And so if you do have um, an extra couple bucks to, to pick up some, um, some, some goods, some canned goods or anything like that, or even if you have perishables, um, we would love for you to drop them off on Tuesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. in order just to make sure that they're preserved and ready to go for the next morning. But thank you so much, uh, MRCC, and really look forward uh, to today's sermon. And I hope that you are blessed by um, our unshakable hope. God bless. Good morning, Mid Rivers Christian Church, friends and family. We're beginning a new series this morning entitled Unshakable Hope. At the end of World War II, an American submarine came back to Newport News, Virginia to dock in the harbor. Tragically, the sub sank to the bottom the harbor and the Coast Guard was dispatched in order to see if they could rescue the submariners. The divers dove down and they heard some banging on the hull of the sub and one invented submariner had a hammer and on the outer hull he was tapping in Morris code and what he tapped was is there hope? Is there hope? I believe that's a question that a lot of people are asking today, especially nowadays with everything that's going on. Friends, I don't have to tell you that we live in a messed up, broken world. And it would be so easy to get cynical about life. But I'm here to tell you this morning that there is hope hope. We're going to talk about that hope over the next several weeks. We just celebrated Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in the book of 1 Peter, Peter writes that we have been born again 
to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came, died, and rose again, you and I have hope. And I want to share with you a hope, an unshakable hope. In the Old Testament, there are a number of names that are given for God. One is Jehovah Shalom. I am the God of peace. The other is Jehovah Jireh. I am the God who provides. Another name is Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. I am the God who is there. As a matter of fact, in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35, the very last chapter and last verse of that book, uh, it says that God is always there. It ends with that. Jehovah Shammah, God is always there. Friends, wherever God is, there is hope. And there is hope because God is in control. And because God is in control, there is hope. Because he is always there, Jehovah Shammah, there are three important realities that we need to get a hold of. The first one is this. Because he is always there, his presence is always watching over you and me. Because he is always there, his presence is watching over me. In the Bible, the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 8, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. I underlined a few of the things that this verse points out. You may or may not be able to see it on the screen here. First of all, he says, I will guide you. No matter what's going on in life, God promises to be present and he promises to guide us. He does that for the Christian through the Holy Spirit. He will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I don't know about you, but I want to be on the right pathway, and I don't just want to be on an okay pathway. I don't want to just be on a good pathway. He says, I will guide you on the best pathway for your life. He also says, I will advise you. I will guide you. I will advise you. And thirdly, he says, I will watch over you. When I see that phrase, it reminds me of an old hymn. His eye is on the sparrow. Based on the scripture, Jesus had said that, not a sparrow falls to the ground without God noticing that happening. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. You know, there are a lot of uncertainties in life. People will disappoint you. Work can vanish before you. Health may fail you. Problems can plague you. Have you ever noticed we don't get problems that we can handle, do we? We don't get the problems we can handle because if we could handle them, they wouldn't be a problem. We get problems that are difficult, problems that are not easy to handle. It wouldn't be a problem if we could handle it. And yet God promises to be there regardless of the problems we face. Regardless of what happens in our lives, God never leaves us. He promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is always there. Jehovah Shammah. How many of you realize that there is nothing that goes on in your life but what God is not there? but what God is not present, but what God does not see. You see, God is always there. I like a verse in the book of Lamentations, chapter three. I have hope when I think of this. The Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They are new every morning. Isn't that an awesome awesome verse. You see, God is always there. And because he's there, his presence is watching over you. 
and it's watching over me. Secondly, uh, because he's always there, his purpose is working in me. His purpose is working in you. The Bible promises us that no matter what's going on in your life, God is present, God is accounted for, and he is working in your life. He is at work to will and to work for his good pleasure, the Bible tells us. God's purpose is working in our life, whether we recognize it or not. There's an awesome verse, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I like that verse, plans to give you hope and a future. I like what John Maxwell says. He says, when you have hope in the future, you have power in the present. And when you understand the purpose behind the problem, you also have power in the present as well. I'm reminded of an Old Testament character, Job. Job, of all people, probably faced more trials, more difficulties, more troubles, more problems than perhaps anyone else in the Old Testament. You see, Satan asked to test Job. Satan kind of put a bet before God and said, God, there's no wonder he follows you. You've put a hedge around him. You're protecting him. Of course he's following you. You let me have at him and you will see how well he follows you. I'll test him and we'll see if he doesn't fall. And God allowed Satan to test him. And Job faced all kinds of really difficult problems, really difficult trials. But we know that there was a purpose in those problems. As a matter of fact, later on in the New Testament, it says we've seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings with Job. We see that the Lord is gracious, we see that the Lord is merciful, and we learn a lesson in life from the perseverance and the faithfulness of Job. You see, there was a purpose behind the problem. And he had hope in the future, even though he didn't understand the difficulties he was facing in the present. We seldom get the problems that we can handle because if we could handle them, they wouldn't be a problem. But when we understand that there's a purpose in the problem, then we can have power in the present. Let me pause for just a second and let me ask you, are you going through some difficulties? Are you facing some trials? Are you troubled by some circumstances and situations? Are you dealing with some problems that you feel as though they're, they're, they're over your head, they are out of your league, they are above your pay grade? I just want you to know that God has a plan. God has a purpose and God is working his purpose and God is accomplishing his plan even through the problem. We learn that in the life of, life of Joseph in the Old Testament. Once again, unfairly imprisoned, unfairly sold as a slave, unfairly lied about and accused of things he didn't do. And I have to imagine for a good portion of his life, he was dealing with problems that were way above his pay grade, problems he didn't understand, and yet there was a purpose in the problem. God was using his life and Joseph would later become the channel through which the Israelites would be saved and taken care of. You see, God does that in our lives because he's always there. His place is waiting for us. In the book of John, chapter 14, it says this, do not let your hearts be troubled Believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. You see, he's preparing a place for you and me. We just celebrated Easter. We talked about how Jesus died on the cross. We talked about how Jesus arose from the grave and he went and ascended to heaven and now he tells us 
that while he's there, he is preparing a place for you and for me. That's what Jesus is doing right now so that he could receive us unto himself so we can have hope in life. And ironically, we can have hope even in death. There's a passage in Thessalonians where the Apostle Paul says, our friends, we want you to know the truth about those who have died so that you will not be sad as are those who have no hope. He says, we won't be sad. Those of us who have a hope in Jesus, those of us who are believers in Jesus, he says, we have a hope. We don't have to be sad because we know that when we die, we go to be with God. We know that when our loved ones die, they go to be with God. It seems like it wasn't that long ago. Um, it almost seems like a very brief moment. It's been several years, however. Um, we lost uh, Deb's dad, my wife's uh, father, suddenly, out of nowhere, due to a heart attack. He was as healthy as healthy could be. He had had a checkup just a month or two before, uh, came out with a clean bill of health. He, he was as strong as an ox, as active as anyone you would know. Uh, we all thought he would outlive all of us. And then out of nowhere, I got a phone call from my mother-in-law saying that he had a heart attack. It's a very sad time for our family. We lost someone we love, but we did not lose our hope. And it was ironic uh, because he had come to the church where I served just several months prior to that. And one of the last songs that he sang while he was at the church was the song, Because He Lives. Every time I hear that song, I get a little teary-eyed because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, one day I'll cross that river. And on that day, Keith Crow crossed that river and his spirit went home to be with Jesus. You see, we can have hope even in death. I would like to use this as somewhat of a benedictory prayer. It's the passage in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What a phenomenal uh, thought that the Apostle Paul shared with the Romans. Friends, no matter what happens, no matter how bad things get, no matter in life or in death, you and I, believers in Jesus, always have hope. And whenever we begin to doubt or we begin to wonder, we need to remember that his presence is watching over us. His purpose is working in us and his place is waiting for us. God loves you and he wants to receive us unto himself. And that happens first and foremost when we accept his son, Jesus Christ, as our personal Lord and Savior. Let me pray. Dear God, I pray that through this time that our people, our church, your people would have peace and joy and most of all hope. Father, I pray for those who know not Jesus, who need to experience the hope that the gospel provides. Father, may through this time they become aware of their need for Jesus and may you use us to share that message of hope. In Christ's name I pray, amen.